So the Toronto Raptors defeated the Philadelphia 76ers 110 to 102. Man, what a game. First of all, Joel Embiid playing on a right thumb injury. A lot of the Raptors players playing on injuries. Scotty Barnes coming back from the injury. Fred Van Vliet leaving the first half with a hip injury. And I don't know. This game was definitely interesting. James Harden being the number one scoring option for the Philadelphia 76ers. I would say it definitely didn't work out because they didn't win. And Harden had a pretty inefficient game. So we're going to go over the game, talking about the box score, talking about each and every player. And the series moving forward because looking at it right now, it's going to be 3-1 Philadelphia. We're going to go back to Philadelphia next game. And if the Sixers win next game, it's going to be bye-bye toronto raptors so hopefully the raptors can come back before we get into the video i'd appreciate you guys drop a like and subscribe to the channel and let's get into the video so we'll start it off with the raptors side of things pascal siakam 34 points eight rebounds and five assists one steal two blocks on 10 of 19 from the field and one of four from three siakam taking majority of the shots today with fred van vliet out in the first half with the right hip injury and he played pretty well today. You know, three-pointer wasn't really dropping, but he made majority of his shots and was looking really great today, being the leader that the Raptors needed. And without anyone being a number one scoring option on his team, Siakam was that guy today. And moving forward, he should beat this guy. Van Vliet today didn't play particularly too well, but uh, we will see. I mean, hopefully the Raptors crunch out the next two wins. And by that time, hopefully Van Vliet is healthy. Looking at the other guys, OG with 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists, 1 steal on 3 of 13 from the field, and 1 of 7 from 3. It was a horrible shooting night from 3, from basically both teams. I mean, the Sixers shot a little bit better, 13 of 31, compared to the Raptors, 8 of 34 from the 3. But OG today didn't play particularly well either. He had 4 fouls in 31 minutes, 3 of 13 from the field isn't all too great either. I mean, OG this season, well, not season, but this postseason has been pretty great, actually. In the three games, he's actually averaging 24 points per game on 57% from the field and 48% from three. The problem with him is that this game especially didn't really score too much today. So hopefully he can get back on track and hopefully the Raptors can win next game in Philadelphia. That's going to be a, a huge order for this Raptors team because they are still pretty young. So hopefully Scotty Barnes comes back healthier next game. We are going to be talking about Scotty Barnes. He came off the bench today. Uh, we'll look at the other guys. Ken Birch, six minutes and only had three rebounds. Van Vliet, 15 minutes, only had five points and three assists, two rebounds on two of six from the field. And Gary Trent, 24 points, three rebounds, and one assist, two steals in the block on eight of 20 from the field, and three of 10 from three. So Gary Trent today played well, finally 24 points, but pretty inefficient night from Gary Trent. So looking off the bench, Scotty Barnes and Thad Young are really the only two heroes of the game. I mean, Chris Boucher also had a pretty great game. But Thad Young today was doing a lot of damage in the first quarter. I mean, 13 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, 3 steals in the block on 6 and 9 from the field and 1-3 from 3. Had this amazing highlight play against Joel Embiid where he dropped him. And it was just so funny to watch because Joel Embiid, he's basically looked as a villain against Toronto. So great game from Thad Young. This is what I wanted to see from him off the bench. I mean, just provide some good scoring and all around good playmaking and good rebounding while also giving them some good defense. So great game from Thad Young. Chris Boucher, nine points and five rebounds. Finally, Scotty Barnes with six points and 11 rebounds with two assists. So I don't know, the Raptors today, they played their hearts out today without Van Vliet, one of their leaders on the team. And I don't know, without Van Vliet, hopefully he is back next game. And if he isn't, I think the Raptors might struggle a little bit not saying that they didn't really struggle today without van vliet i think with joel Embiid next game hopefully he recuperates his right thumb if he comes back a little bit healthier then it's going to be a little bit difficult for the raptors to contain him in the post today especially i mean he was struggling with his right thumb injury but also he was struggling with a lot of missed foul calls and i don't know joel Embiid didn't look too well today we'll go over the box score for the sixer side of things so we got James Harden with 22 points, 9 assists, and 5 rebounds, 1 steal, and 3 blocks. Great overall stat line. Pretty inefficient night. 5 of 17 from the field and 2 of 8 from 3. Harden at this point in his career, he isn't going to be a scorer anymore. He's more of a facilitator, being a good playmaker. And that's really what we really want from him. But... I think he needs to take over some games sometimes because in games like this, I mean, we're going to need to see him drop like 30 or 40 points on a pretty efficient night. So I think if he drops the playmaking a little bit and then starts scoring up a little bit more, do a little bit more iso ball, I think that would help the Sixers offense a little bit more because I think 
James Harden, him scoring 30 to 40 points isn't going to be happening anymore. But if we get that once a night or once every few nights, I'd be so fine with that. Because James Harden, I just miss seeing him score a huge amount of points each night. I mean, the 30 point per game Harden is pretty much gone. I just want to see him drop points when we really need him to. Because this game especially, if he dropped 30 or 40 points, it would have been a lot more closer than an 8 point lead. So looking at the other guys, Joel Embiid with 21 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists on 7 of 16 from the field and 0-1 from 3. Embiid, like I said, didn't have a great game. Pretty inefficient night. Only scored 21 points and 8 rebounds. Not too much to talk about. Embiid tried drawing a lot of fouls today, had 9 free throws, Harden had 11 free throws, combined <laughs> only 20 free throws in total for them. Embiid was trying to foul bait a lot this game and it was just so apparent, so I think he's starting to play a little bit soft. And it makes sense, because his right thumb injury is just, you know, hampering him at this point. But Embiid, he needs to come back next game stronger and hopefully he has a good game, because 21 and 8 isn't going to get it done. So next we got Tyrese Maxey, 11 points, 6 assists, and 6 rebounds, 1 steal. On 4-12 from the field and 1-3 three from 3. Maxey didn't play all too well today either. Danny Green, 6 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists. And Tobias Harris with 15 points, 11 rebounds, and 2 assists, 1 steal, and 2 blocks. So the role players for this team didn't play too well. Harris actually played pretty well. 15 and 11 is a great game on 7-12 of 12 from the field. But I don't know, the bench is still a huge weakness. I mean, Niang still has been pretty great for them off the bench. 9 points and 1 assist, 1 rebound. Same thing with Paul Reed. He's been pretty great. 8 points and 5 rebounds. But no one else on the team is going to be scoring off the bench. That's why I mentioned this previously that they should bring in a good 6-man, a good point guard off the bench to run the second unit. You know, relieve Harden of some on-ball duties and overall pressure. Because I think James Harden, 42 minutes was a team high. He's going to have a lot of pressure playing the point guard position. while also trying to score and play make and facilitate the offense so i don't know the sixers they can come back stronger next game they are still up 3-1 so hopefully they don't blow that lead if they do blow it i'm gonna be so surprised because i think the sixers they have potential they just need to figure it out i think they do and for the raptors side of things hopefully they can crunch out the next two wins to tie up the series i think they can siakam hopefully he becomes that guy for this team in the future or basically in the postseason because i feel like van vliet might not even play for the next few games hopefully siakam can carry this team hopefully the raptors can crunch out the next wins and go raptors this is the video i'm jdc my peace